Hey there, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printing Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Today's video is meant to be a resource for newer 3D printers or for folks who are thinking about getting into the hobby. It's a guide where I assume no prior knowledge of 3D printing and instead of doing a normal step-by-step -step guide, this would be more like a conversation where we talk about how to research and choose the right 3D printer for you and then how and where to buy it. I want this to feel as if you're a friend at the local game store who knows i3D print and says, hey Danny, I'm thinking about maybe getting a 3D printer. Could I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> Big mistake, buddy. Of course you can ask me questions. And 30 minutes later, you've received the contents of this video in discussion format. And I get to have this conversation again today because I've got a friend here with me today. Come say hi, AJ. I'm coming. AJ's Hello. here helping me film and edit this video, so he'll be right behind the camera. And I'm gonna talk to him while we film this. Right. So if we go off script, that's why. Okay? I hope we go off script. <laughs> Sorry, man. All right. You're so, stuck with me next so, half hour, bud. <laughs> it's gonna be great. I don't know much of anything about 3D printers, so what exactly can I 3D print? Now you can make a lot more than just minis and terrain. So 3D printing goes so well with so many tabletop games and hobbies, and the variety of things that you can print is, is awesome. Uh, so here's some examples. Small minis, big minis, small terrain, big terrain, airships, boats, dungeon tiles, collectible statues, props, buildings, paint handles, paint racks. <sighs> See what I mean? The fun part is 3D printing feels like magic, like a real life replicator. After a while you get used to it, but then you show a print to a friend and they say, that is so cool. And you remember what it felt like when you just started all over again. Great, so like, what do I need to actually get started and start printing stuff? Yeah, uh, you don't need a lot. In fact, most 3D printers come with everything you need to get started. So you just need to be able to follow instructions really well and use an Allen wrench. That's basically it. You don't need a dedicated workbench or fancy tools. As long as you have a place where you can keep and use your printer, you'll be okay. What specific kind of printer do I buy? So you know, normally when we're thinking about buying a printer, we go to Amazon and you take out your phone and search for the highest rated thing with the best reviews. Uh, you know, don't do that with a 3D printer. Cause buying a 3D printer, it's kind of like buying a car. You know, you're gonna hear me reference that a lot today actually, cause most of us can relate to this. You, know, you might need a truck because you need to haul stuff or because, you know, you live in Texas. Or maybe uh, you'll need a hatchback because you live in a tightly packed city or a minivan because you need space for a growing family. And just like with cars, there's a million different 3D printer brands you can choose from. But what's more important than the brand and the model is to first know the type of car that you need. And it's kind of the same way with 3D printers. Okay, so what are the, what are the types of 3D mm -hmm. printers? There are two main types of 3D printers, but I think it'll be easier if I show you. So let me just bring my printers over and take it from there, <laughs> okay? So there are a bunch of types of printers, but these are the most common ones that we use for printing things for tabletop games. So this is a Creality Ender 3 V2, and this is an Elegoo Mars Pro 2. And they're pretty common printers right now, but I don't want you to focus on the brand, I want you to understand how they work so you can start to think about what type of printer you're gonna need. FDM printers, work similar to a hot glue gun. You push plastic and 3D printing lingo, this is called filament, into a tube called a PTFE tube or sometimes directly into the nozzle. And then the nozzle heats up and then this motor pushes the filament in little by little. While other motors move the nozzle and the bed where they need to go based on what the 3D printing software tells it to do. And what ends up happening is the printer creates these layers that stack on one another and voila, you get prints like this. So if you see people talking about layer lines up close, it's because of the way this printer works and how thick the layers usually are. Resin printers work a bit differently. Instead of plastic on a spool, they use resin, which without getting too technical, is a liquid that can harden into plastic. So please don't drink it, even if it's a nice bubblegum color, okay? Yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> These resin printers, they have LCD screens like the ones in our cell phones. Google gang, baby. And they'll flash UV light for each layer, hardening those specific parts of each layer. So the printer still builds layer on layer of hardened plastic on a build plate, but it uses a screen instead of a moving nozzle. This sounds kind of complicated, but it isn't as difficult as it sounds, and you'll see what I mean later once we start printing things. Okay, so we got FDM, yeah. and we got resin. Uh huh. So which one's probably best for me? Okay, that's a good question. It depends on what you want to print, other factors that might be important to you. So both of these types of printers, they have different strengths and weaknesses. So if we're looking at printers within the same price range, like $200 to $400, which is usually the range people start with. 
right? So FDM printers usually have much larger build volume, which means you can print much bigger things on them, making them a really good choice for like terrain pieces or props, cosplay items. The flip side is that FDM printers print with thicker layer lines than resin printers. So layer lines are definitely more visible. And if you're doing things like painting, it can be a lot of work to kind of cover the layer lines so it isn't as obvious, which really bothers some people, to be honest. And the prints can also take longer, but that's partially because you're printing larger things in general. Now resin printers, on the other hand, they're made for smaller, more intricate things with a lot of detail like jewelry and minis, small scatter. And even though resin prints are generally better with detail, it doesn't mean no layers. It just means the layers are much smaller. You've really got to look super close to see them 99% of the time. So from here, not noticeable, but under a macro lens, you can make some of those layer lines out. It's really great for small details, but that catch, they are a lot smaller, so they don't have as much space to print on. And with that $200 to $400 price range, the difference is really noticeable. A lot of terrain won't fit on them, but most mini and small scatter does usually fit on their build plates. And if you want a resin printer that has a bigger build volume, they're becoming cheaper every year. You're just gonna have to pay more than that $200 to $400 range I brought up earlier. Now most mid-size printers, they'll start around the $600 range, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few years we see that price go down. So AJ, give me a summary, man. Okay, so FDM is typically for like larger terrain mm -hmm. pieces. And resin is better for kind of smaller miniatures because of the line difference. That's basically it. I'm nailing it. <laughs> I do want to add one thing. Uh, I think it's important. So there's potential risks and smell when dealing with resin. Resin's famous for being stinky and needing additional safety precautions. Glasses and nice round gloves usually cover it. And sometimes I bring in the heavy hitters. I've tried a bunch of different resin brands and colors, and some are stinkier than others, and some people are more sensitive to the smells than others. So, come here, come closer, man. On a scale of disgusting fart, axe body odor, and no smell at all, how stinky? What am I sniffing? Not too much. I think you hyped it up too much. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's it's. It's kind of like old an old Nike, you know? It's like it's like very rubbery. It's very rubbery. There you have it. Very rubbery. <laughs> Let me put this back on. Like I don't know if you've ever, ever uh, smelled like an electrical fire, but it smells a little no. bit like that. I'm sorry, AG. I've never smelled an electrical <laughs> you've, you've, fire. You've not I started as many as fires no. as I have. As no, I haven't. Now. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's put we'll this on. We we'll, we will get there. There you go, everybody. Uh, resin also gets everywhere. You know, I try my best to keep my garage clean, but you know, I'm simply saying that uh, resin finds a way. Okay, so what if I want to print terrain and minis as well? It's always the follow-up. Always. <laughs> and I wish it was a clear answer, but I don't think there is. Um, ideally, you might have one of each printer, you know, for different situations, like having a minivan for when you need to take the family out and having a truck for when you need to haul something big. And if you have to choose one to start with, maybe budget is a real limitation or you just want to ease into the hobby, we can narrow it down with some follow-up questions. So what do you want to print the most of? If it's minis, then I'd lean towards a resin printer. And more and more companies are making smaller terrain for resin printers these days too, so you still can get a little bit of both. If it's terrain, I'd lead towards an FDM printer since most terrain pieces are made for FDM and it's just easier to print the larger pieces on them, honestly. Now, FDM printers aren't necessarily bad for minis either. I don't want to sell them short here. I've printed a lot of minis on FDM printers and I'm, I'm actually really happy with a lot of them, but they're definitely below the quality and smoothness expectations of some people. So buying an FDM printer ends up being an acceptable compromise for a lot of people. What are you thinking, AJ? So I like the idea of resin. Mm -hmm. It sounds kind of more detail oriented and mm -hmm. finer details, but also like I have a cat and I'm positive <laughs> she's just going to want to slurp up the, the resin. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of worried about it. Yeah, some people don't want to deal with it because of the smell or the safety things, and, and that's fine. You know, if you're willing to consider it, I just look at your situation honestly and see if it works. And maybe consider FDM printer if that's the case. But also I'd never work with resin until I got my first resin printer and I learned as long as you're wearing the protective gear and clean up and consider ventilation, it's not too bad. So I wouldn't necessarily be afraid of it either. So how do I know which specific printer I should get? 
So that's like asking which car you should buy, right? The Toyota, Honda, Ford, Hyundai sedans, they're very similar in price a lot of time and they're probably gonna work very similar. So it's the same with 3D printers. There's a lot of Ender 3 clones, for example, and most of them work pretty similarly. So it depends on how particular you are about the exact brand you want or the exact features you want your printer to have. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what printer I have then as long as I buy the, the type I want, FDM versus resin. Yeah, that's uh, kind of, not really. <laughs> okay, wait, what? Yeah, so I wanna make the section future-proof and share like how you can find the right printer regardless of whether it's this year or 2023. So a lot of times 3D printing tech doesn't um, stay the same forever, right? It doesn't stay the best choice for too long. Uh, for example, the Ender 3, the original from 2018, uh, it's three years old, but now there's an Ender 3 Pro, an Ender 3 V2, you know, Ender 5, Ender 5 Plus, and I could actually go on, right? So it doesn't mean that the printer's not gonna be good anymore for a few years, but if you enjoy it, you'll probably wanna upgrade over time, kind of like people do with their computers or how they buy the new video game systems every couple of years. So what I'd suggest is instead of getting too bogged down with analysis paralysis, you join a couple of 3D printing communities between Facebook, Discord, Instagram, Reddit, just be there, take it in, hang out, for a few days at least. And when you see one or two prints you like, take note of what it was printed on and what settings they used. If you start seeing the same printer come up like this over and over and over again, that's worth something, right? A big community of users is generally a good sign. You mentioned Instagram and Reddit and all that stuff. Why not, why not YouTube? I mean, whenever I go to buy something big, that's like the first place I do when I look at a million reviews. I would, I would wait for YouTube. I really would. Um, and partially and i say that as a youtube <laughs> as a youtuber um because if you just start on youtube and you type in 3d printer reviews you're going to find so many different printers uh some brands are going to be smaller some will be more popular and it can get really overwhelming very quickly so i'd wait to look at those until you're a bit more familiar with some of the more popular brands printers you know and that comes with time so i wouldn't worry about watching every review and uh, i'd ease into it right? and i say that again as someone who does reviews so Little by little, what's gonna happen is you're gonna build confidence in a specific printer and then I'd buy it on Amazon. You just told me not to buy things <laughs> on Amazon. What I, do you mean? I know, I know I did. And I'm sorry about that. But the thing is Amazon usually has, um, they have really fast shipping and it's the safest option in case something happens for whatever reason. You get a faulty printer, you know, if your printer has a warped bed or the screen doesn't work, any of the things you just happen with bad luck, you can return it. You don't have to worry about paying for shipping costs or an exchange costing extra money or anything like that. And even though buying through Amazon is usually more expensive than on the company's website, I consider it like a form of peace of mind insurance. That extra $20, $40 it costs on Amazon is usually worth it to me in case things don't work out. And yeah, there's sometimes where you live in another country or something where Amazon's not really an option. Um, and I'd look for a local 3D printing store first. You know, printers are usually more expensive there too, but local stores tend to make up for it in service. They're more than willing to answer your questions and that's really nice as a beginner. And it's good to support your local 3D printing community too. The last option I'd consider are websites like AliExpress, Banggood, even local stores like Aldi in Australia, for example. Now, you can usually get printers cheaper on these sites, but the return process is not always the best in my experience, and that peace of mind is pretty important to me. Okay, so different question. Yeah. Um, we're in your garage. Mm -hmm. There's a shit ton of tools in here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do I need any of these? Do, like, what, do I need a bunch <laughs> of stuff to get started? It's been three, four years of me collecting this stuff. Um, and like I mentioned, most printers come with everything you need in the box. So, you know, that includes things like Allen wrenches and spatulas to remove prints. So I suggest getting comfortable with the base printer before moving on to new accessories or upgrades. I definitely do think that there are some nice things you can buy, like, like I mentioned, a nice Allen wrench set. But I don't have a nice Allen wrench set and it's been four years. So I think you'll be okay to start off. Now there's, there is two exceptions, uh, a metal spatula like uh, this one, if you buy a resin printer, because most of them don't come with it and this is much better for removing prints than the plastic one that does come with them usually. And number two is some kind of cleaning agent for the resin prints. Uh, the most common is IPA. Okay, so you mentioned upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean by that? Upgrades are kind of like with cars, right? You, you might want a spoiler, you might want rims. Right. Um, they're optional. You might, you know, in 3D printing world, you might get a metal extruder. So if I want like a gold, a gold plate, 
uh, a gold grill for my my three D printer. I could just put that on there. there. But it's really aesthetic. It's not. <laughs> it's not neat. There there are quality of life upgrades. That that metal extruder is one of them. But yes, I guarantee you that somebody's put some type of uh, gold grill on their three D printer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of videos that are on YouTube. Honestly, these days, entry-level printers, they come with a lot of those quality of life printers that folks used to print and add themselves. Every new generation of printers seems to add more of those features. So I wouldn't worry as much about upgrades. They can be nice to have, but I'd start with following the base instructions carefully and getting comfortable printing a few things first. You an instruction follower, AJ? I'm more of a trial by fire kind of guy. <laughs> Me too, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and I've learned to be a little more instruction oriented uh, the hard way. You know, some people want to start upgrading their printer immediately and that can cause other problems that you might not even realize since you're new to 3D printing in general. And for reference, I've only added two upgrades to my base Ender 3s after three years and I haven't added any to my Ender 3 V2. So I mean it when I say, I don't think you need to go overboard most of the time. Okay, so let's stop talking about it. Uh, can we set one up and like get it going? Yeah. Actually, before we get these set up, why don't you get started? Today can be the first day where you embark on your own 3D printing adventure and find the printer that's right for you. If you have any follow-up questions, I'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment below, I do read them all. And if I get a lot of the same question, I'll do my best to make a follow-up video answering it. If you enjoy the content I make and wanna support the channel, the best way to do so is to pick up a late pledge on our website, lostadventures.co. Our Lost Adventures Volume 1 collection was made for brand new 3D printing DMs just like you. And if you're not quite ready to pick up some models, liking this video and sharing it goes a long ways too. Thanks again for watching, happy printing, and happy gaming.